What's up guys, it's River, and today we're looking at the best budget mirrorless cameras. We're gonna look at different budget levels, but also different types of users. Whether you're a beginner who just wants to casually shoot pretty sunsets, or someone who's really passionate and wants to make something absolutely stunning. Either way, I've got you covered, so let's get into it. By the way, if you're new to the channel, we talk about anything and everything to do with camera gear, including teaching you guys how to take better photos and videos. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you want to see more of this awesome content. And, and, and as always, I'm going to leave links down below for all the products that we talk about today. So be sure to check that out and let's get into it. So the first camera on the list today is the Canon M200. Not only is it a great mirrorless camera, but it's also perfect for shooting everyday things. And the main reason behind that is the design of this camera. The design is nice and slim, made to easily fit inside your backpack or jacket pocket. And what makes it fantastic is the flip up screen so that you can see yourself when filming. On top of that, the flip up screen is also a touch screen so that you can easily control this camera without any hassle. The M200 is extremely user friendly. So if you're someone that struggles with technology or you're just new to cameras, this camera is going to give you a very easy time. You can just pick it up and get great results. When it comes to the qualities of the photos and videos, it is stunning. It has a 24 megapixel sensor, which is going to give you fantastic results. On top of that, it has 14 bit raw. So when it comes to editing your photos, you will have a ton of flexibility. As for frame rates and photo speeds, when it comes to photos, it does 6.1 frames per second, which is kind of slow. So if you're shooting anything with action or fast movement, this camera might struggle a little bit, but when it comes to video, it does full HD up to 60 frames per second, which gives you two times slow motion, and it's going to be very easy to capture fast moving objects. And it also has 120 frames per second, which is four times slow motion in 720p. Now 720p is kind of low res, but at this price point, this is the best that you can get. And this camera does have 4K, but personally, I really wouldn't use it. When you go into 4K mode, it ends up cropping into your sensor by 1.7 and basically just zooms in your video a lot. And because you end up throwing away half your sensor, half the megapixels are gone, all the detail just isn't in the video. I really wouldn't use this as a 4K camera. But one thing that I absolutely love about the Canon M200 and really any Canon camera for that matter are the colors. The colors look good right out of the camera, but on top of that, the skin tones, the skin tones are just perfection. One of the things that you notice when you're looking at a photo of someone is their skin and the skin looks amazing on Canon cameras. If you're gonna be shooting a lot of yourself or other people, the Canon cameras are going to give you great results. The autofocus in this camera is fantastic, both in photo and video mode. It has Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which has face tracking, eye tracking, object tracking, all the kind of tracking you want, so it's really good. It doesn't have in-body stabilization, but it has digital IS, which keeps your footage fairly smooth. The thing that I don't love about this camera is that it does not have an input for an external audio jack, so if you wanna do any kind of professional audio, you're out of luck, but have no fear. I have a camera later in this list that would be perfect for you. However, the internal audio is really solid as long as you're close to the mic because if you step too far, it gets a little low. However, one thing that I have to mention, the battery does not last for a very long time, but I feel like most people that get this camera are probably gonna get a spare battery anyway, so it's not that big of a concern. So overall, if this is your first camera, you just want a casual camera to shoot everyday things with, the M200 is a great place to start. However, if you want something with a little more horsepower and a few more features, I've got the perfect camera for you up next. And just before we get into the next camera, if you guys are enjoying this video, please leave a like down below. It helps me out, helps me make more of these videos for you guys. And if you don't wanna do it for me, do it for the baby panda. Look how cute it is. Baby pandas, let's get into the next camera. So the next camera on the list is the Fuji X-T200 and it's a camera I'm really excited to talk about. Fuji is one of my favorite camera brands and whenever someone's like, hey, what camera do I get to make really artsy, interesting, dramatic photos? I'm always telling people to pick up a Fuji camera 
But then underneath my breath, I'm like, but it's like $2,000, but it's like $1,800 because they are very expensive cameras. And this is why the XC200 is a really exciting camera because it's kind of a budget camera. And believe it or not, Fuji cameras are often going on sale. So keep your eye open. And another thing that makes the Fuji cameras really interesting is that it actually has different film emulations built right in. So you get several different looks that are modeled after old vintage film right in camera. So no matter what you shoot with this camera, you're going to get a really interesting look. So now that I've talked about how amazing the colors in this camera look, let's talk about the actual specs. In terms of photos, it does eight frames per second in 14 bit raw, which is pretty impressive. And if you're doing anything with a lot of movement or fast action, this camera will easily keep up. But 4K mode is where it gets really interesting because this camera has 4K without a crop up to 30 frames per second and full HD up to 60 frames per second, again, without a crop. And just in case you're wondering, this camera does have pretty good autofocus. It's not quite Canon or Sony good, but it is by no means bad. And it does have pretty good electronic stabilization for all of your handheld needs. But what really stands out with this camera is the design. Fuji cameras are made to look like old school vintage cameras from the 40s and 60s. So visually, this definitely looks like a vintage camera, but it has all of the modern dials and buttons that you would want on a modern camera. When it comes to the physical ergonomics of this camera, it's great. It has a separate dial just for color profiles, a separate dial for shutter and aperture, everything you need but the menus are not very user-friendly and honestly, they're kind of confusing. Fuji, if you're watching this, please straighten up your menus. They are worse than Sony menus, please. Sincerely a fan. And on top of that, it has a side articulating screen so you can see yourself while filming, but overall, a side articulating screen just has a ton of usability. It's very easy to use and it's much more user-friendly than a top flip-up screen. But one thing that I do have to mention, this camera does not have good battery life. I really do recommend getting two or even three spare batteries. Overall, this is a great everyday camera, but if you're somebody that wants to make artsy photos and videos, this is also a fantastic fit simply because of the Fuji colors. Plus, on top of that, this camera has fantastic 4K. So next up, let's talk about the Sony A6000 series. Yes series. The reason for this is that the Sony a6000 series is kind of like the iPhones. They're very similar with slight differences for different price points. But the main cameras we're looking at is the Sony a6000, the Sony a6100, and the Sony a6400. All three of these cameras have a 24 megapixel sensor and do 11 frames per second in photo mode with 14 bit raw. The place where you really notice the difference between these cameras is really video, autofocus, and colors. The Sony a6000 is the most affordable. It has fantastic autofocus, like truly great autofocus, and it does full HD all the way up to 60 frames per second. But the colors in this camera are kind of old because the camera itself is kind of old. If you're not too picky with your colors or you're happy to adjust your colors with editing, this camera will do a great job for you. And above the a6000 is the a6100. The main upgrades that you get with this camera are 4K up to 30 frames per second, way better autofocus, which is saying a lot. Plus you get the brand new Sony Venice Color Science, which directly comes from Sony's cinema camera line. So trust me, it looks amazing. On top of that, it has a flip up screen so that you can see yourself. Sadly, the flip up screen doesn't have great touch functionality. Sony still wants you to mainly use your cameras with buttons. Which finally brings us to the A6400. The main upgrade here is the fact that it has cinema profiles built right in. So you have things like Cinema 1, Cinema 4, S-Log2, S-Log3 right in the camera. So this is specifically for somebody that wants to do a lot of heavy color grading to their camera and you want to make something either cinematic or something that's very commercial. Also, I should mention only the A6100 and 6400 have an input for an external audio microphone. And another thing that I have to mention, when it comes to battery life, the A6000 is six out of 10. It's not great, but the A6100 and 6400 are much, much better. However, with any Sony camera, I really do recommend having several spare batteries. Sony is not known for their battery life. Overall, because these cameras have so much horsepower, you can kind of use them for anything. Just pick the right camera for you if you want to do something cinematic, get the A6400, but if you don't need to color grade your stuff, the other two cameras will be just fine. To be honest, the A6000 line is kind of for everybody simply because it has so much horsepower. By the way, if this is your first camera and you're feeling kind of intimidated or 
you simply wanna take your photos and videos to the next level, I've got the perfect thing for you. A lot of you guys ask me in the comments, like, hey, would this camera be good at shooting portraits? How do I do star photography? And I love talking to you guys about that. For that reason, I made the Camera Boost course. In this course, I'm gonna teach you step by step how to make your $500 camera perform like a $3,000 pro camera. But I'm also gonna show you all of my creative secrets to take your work from average to mind blowing. So if you wanna become a pro with your camera and take your work to the next level, be sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. Let's get back into the video. All right guys, last but not least, we have the Canon M50. And in my opinion, it's probably the perfect budget camera for anybody that wants to do something serious or semi-serious in the realm of video. The specs on the M50 are really similar to the M200 because internally, they're almost the same camera, but the M50 has a few key upgrades. The first thing you'll notice is that when it comes to photo mode, it actually does 10 frames per second, which is really fast. And this is pretty in line with the Sony cameras, which actually cost a whole lot more. But when it comes to video features, it is exactly the same. Same autofocus, same resolution, same frame rates. And sadly, yes, the 4K still sucks. However, something that a lot of you guys might miss is that the Canon M50 actually has two versions. There's the Mark I and the Mark II. The two cameras are really the same camera with the Mark II having about 30% better autofocus and live streaming capabilities, but it only costs about $50 more. If you think you'll need that better autofocus in live streaming, go ahead and spend that extra 50 bucks. Otherwise, save it for Chipotle. Yep, Chipotle is my favorite fast food restaurant and they are not a sponsor on this video, but Chipotle, sponsor me. However, the M50 actually has two major upgrades over the M200. And that is, for one, it has a side articulating screen, which is far more user friendly than a top flip up screen. And on top of that, it has an input for external audio, which if you like the M200, you like the audio quality, you want a Canon camera, but external audio is key, the M50 is the perfect camera for you. When it comes to the M50, it's really made for somebody that wants a Canon camera, Canon usability, Canon user friendliness, Canon color science, but you want that side flip up screen and you want an audio jack. For someone that wants to do professional or semi-professional work with a Canon camera, this is perfect. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comments down below what camera you're thinking of picking up and if you wanna become a master at your camera, you really wanna become a pro, check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. I highly recommend it. If you really wanna take your photos and videos to the next level, check out the course. And I will see you in the next video or the course. Peace. <music>